All right, so this one is a, an example direct from Newton where you are using uh, continuous normal distribution situations to approximate binomial. Um, in Newton, sometimes it's hard to determine when you're doing the binomial stuff versus like the regular normal CDF or inverse norm. And Newton sometimes, I'm gonna be straight up, their explanation is ugly. And this is how they explain this process. So I'm going to explain it my way and compare it to what they wrote here so that you can see that it's the same thing. And then you can choose whichever one you like, okay? Um, so hopefully you can understand what they say better. So um, we have the probability of an airline flight arriving on time at a certain airport is 84%. Use the normal uh, normal approximation to find the probability that more than 340 and a random sample of 400 commercial airline flights at the airport will arrive on time. Uh, use your calculator. Of course, I'm using my calculator. Um, now, I know that I'm going to do the binomial stuff. I'm going to call it the binomial stuff, the extra stuff, extra spice, extra crap, that, because... I am not given, I don't know if you see, there's no mean given and there's no standard deviation given. Um, and I'm given a sample. So there's this like a kind of an indication as to the fact that you have to do the extra stuff that, I'm, that comes from like the binomial. So I'm gonna pull out some of the information that's given to me. I know that I have a random sample of 400, so my N is 400. Um, I need, in order to find mu, N and P, and then I need N and Q. And you guys that know me, we do Q. I'm going to put P up here. We do Q based on P. Q is always 1 minus P. So I need to determine P. And once I determine P, I can determine Q. P is the probability of success. Q is the complement, probability of failure. And in this particular case, P is this. The probability of an airline flight arriving on time at a certain airport is 84% or 0.84 which means that Q is the complement of that, um, or 0.16. Now, before I even find the mean and standard deviation, I pulled out all the stuff I need right now, there were requirements <clears throat> that I talked about. There are requirements such that um, they have to be met in order to be able to do the process that I'm about to do. And they don't ask you to check the requirements, and technically you don't have to. However, they show it in the steps here, so just to show you so you're not confused, you have to have these requirements met in order to do the process. You have to have it met. Obviously, if they're asking you to find the probability and there's an answer, you can assume that the, these requirements are met, but I'm comparing it to what they wrote as their answer so you can see. So you have to, you have to determine whether NP is greater than or equal to five, and Q is greater than or equal to 5, so we'll do that. N is 400. P was 0.84. And I hope you could determine, look at that, you know, 400 times 0.84 is definitely bigger than 5. So this part is met, which is cool. And then N is uh, 400 again, and Q is 0.16. And again, you could do the calculations, but that's definitely greater than or equal to 5, for sure. So comparing it to what they wrote here, okay, so you can see at least the first part. They determine, they define their N, they define their P, put it in decimal form, and then they said NP, showing their work, 400 times 24 was 336, and then N times 1 minus P. So instead of saying N times Q, they said N times 1 minus P, which is the same thing as saying N times Q. I just did my Q up here and pulled that value in. Here, they're just plugging it all directly in, which is annoying. 400 times 0 0.16, 64. And they're both greater than 5. Yay, so the first part is met. That's, which means that the normal distribution can be used to approximate the binomial. Yay, so that part is met. Okay, that's what all that initial stuff is saying. Um, before I talk about the rest of it, I like to determine my mean and standard deviation first because I need that when I do normal CDF or inverse norm, depending on what they're asking me for. So I'm gonna do that first. And I, uh, what, n times p, 400 times p, which is 0 0.84, which was 336. 
Um, and then, oops, let me fix my standard deviation. It's not n times q. My standard deviation is n pq under the square root, okay? So 400, hopefully I have space. 400 times 0.84 times 0 0.16 under the square root. I don't know what that is. And actually, I'm going to compare it to what they have here. You see this part? 400 times 0.84 times, that's the standard deviation. I have no idea what it is. Let's find it. Um, so second x squared to get the square root, 400 times 0.84, that's not what that is, and then times 0.16. So I have 7 point, I'm going to take a bunch of these digits because I'm going to use it for calculations, so I'm going to take 7.33212. I'm going to take a bunch of them, and maybe just one. So I, I like six digits to the right of a decimal for a value that I'm using to make other calculations, okay? It's not telling me to round this. I'm gonna use it to do other things, so I'm gonna take at least five to six digits to the right of the decimal. Now, this is not my answer. This is all the pre-work. This is me, you know, pre-stuff, like all the first stuff. It's not the answer. I didn't even get to the answer yet. This is all the stuff I need to get to the answer all the annoying intro stuff that I have to do when I deal with the binomial. So I always like to draw my curve because we're using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial situation, right? We're using continuous. And I write um, always for my, um, my curve, I always like to write my mean, which is 336 as my center, which is always the center of a normal distribution curve. For me, it's reference. This is the center of this curve. This is the value. Now I can go and look at the question that I want to answer. <laughs> My question is, or the question is, where is it? Use the normal approximation to find the probability. Okay, I want area. I want area. That more than 340. Now, 340 I know is over here. Right? And here's the extra crap with binomial as well. Every time I put, deal with a value here that I need to use like for a normal CDF, I have to go 0.5 below it, 339.5, which is running into that, and 0.5 above it, 340.5. Always and forever. This is always what I do. Okay, these are like the values that represent 340 when I'm doing binomial. Um, I want area. I have to figure out where the area is located. Is it to the right of 340? Is it to the right of 339.5? Is it to the left of 339.5? Is it to the left of 340.5? Where is the area? More than, more than 340. So, you know, more than is always to the right. But now the question is, do I go to the right of 340.5 or do I go to the right of 339.5? So I have to ask the question as to whether I'm including 340 or not. And because it says more than 340, that means I'm not including 340, which means I go to the right of 340.5. So I want to read to you what this says. As the probability of more than 340 has to be calculated, the value of interest is 340 plus 0.5, 340.5 as the probability does not include 340. So they're saying the same thing I just said, maybe just without the nice visual. Calculate, so now we're gonna calculate. In order to calculate an area, I'm going normal CDF. Let me use a different color, let's go red. Normal CDF, and I'll show it in a second. And we're gonna bound our area. My lower bound is 340.5. My upper bound is a large positive number, which we typically in this class are using 1E99, e right, like infinity. Then our mean was 336. We determined that, and our standard deviation was 7.332121. Now I want to show you, um, press second bars for the distribution menu. Press 2 for normal CDF. That's what we just determined we're going to use. Enter this stuff. Um, 340.5. Um, I think they maybe do they have an error here. Do you see this 400 times 0.84? That's the same thing we did here for the mean because the mean is always after. 
and then see the square root of 400 times 0.84 times 0.16? That's what we did here. That's the standard deviation. So instead of separately calculating the mean and the standard deviation, they're inputting it all in one line here after normal CDF, which I think is annoying or at least confusing. And that's just a personal thing you guys determine based on yourself. So we're going to do it together. Normal CDF. Second bar is to get it. I'm going normal CDF. My lower bound we said was 340.5. My upper bound, I have it in here already, the one E99, but if you forgot, you go one. And the EE here above the comma, which second comma pulls up that scientific notation on your calculator. Your mean is, in this case, 336. And your standard deviation is 7.33. 2, 1, 2, 1, and then we're going to paste. And we get approximately 0 0.2697 if we're rounding. Approximately 0 0.26, which is what they got right down there. So they're walking you through the same thing that I do. I think it's just the way that they approach it and the way that they represent it is a bit more uncomfortable, but it's the same thing. You guys choose the method that you want. Okay, I know that it's binomial, that, that I have to do this extra stuff, P, Q, this, all this, all this. I have to do all this extra, you know, subtract 0.5. I have, I have to do all that extra nonsense, that extra stuff, not that, but that extra stuff when I'm using, you know, my normal approximation for binomial cases, which I can determine um, when they give me a sample size and when they don't give me a mean and a standard deviation. That's an indication for you guys on Newton when you're doing that whole normal distribution section.